TOA community, what's up everybody? Robert Linkle, trainingtheolderadult.com. I wanna to talk to you today about a workout breakdown. Okay, I wanna start doing these every once in a while. Just kinda of showcase one of the workouts, some of the exercises that we're doing in-house here. Let you get a little bit, uh, we, as we call it, breaking the fourth wall. A little, a little look behind the scenes here, what we're doing in-house. So this was our Monday, September 18th, 9 a.m. ADL Plus group. We have basically five different levels of programming. Starts with Apex, not to confuse everybody, but Apex by itself has five different levels inside of it. So let's just consider Apex as level one with sub-levels, okay? So there's Apex, then there's DLF, Daily Life Function, then there's ADL, Activities of Daily Living. Each of these has their own little sub uh, levels in each one. Then we go to strength and conditioning, number four, and then we have sports performance, which is our number five. So Apex, DLF, ADL, SNC, sports performance, okay? So this is kind of that middle of the road programming for us. We started by doing some dual snatches. That means a very light weight in each hand, hinge to the top of the knees, throwing the weight all the way overhead, returning them back down, and then some suitcase style. That means weight on one side, nothing on the other, Split squats, 10 on each side after we did that whole list of mobilities there on the right, okay? Diving into the workout <clears throat> itself, we had single arm snatches or those, those that can't go all the way overhead due to shoulder impingement or injury. They could do high pulls, uh, either one. Then we're gonna go to a either stick supported or body weight and or loaded or any combo of those three. Um, split squat, and then we are going to kind of finish that first round of lifts with a suitcase carry, what we call walk the plank, heel to toe, kind of balance beam-esque, if you will, forward and back, switch hands forward and back, all for sets of nine, then we do sets of 11, then we do sets of 13, and then 15, or about 20 minutes, whichever one kind of comes up first. This way, those that aren't in the best of shape or that are just kind of joining into the groups, um, can do you know two rounds while our more experienced clients can get all four rounds in. Everybody starts together, everybody finishes together, everybody gets to work at a level that's their ability. Nobody has to wait on anyone else. So we kind of program it for here's your total volume or this window of time and then we're all gonna move on to something else, okay? So I have Elaine. Uh, now this was done in the house, this workout. And uh, this, this video is of Elaine uh, performing those in-house, but also we had clients online. So um, not that you'll be able to hear as we're going through this, but if you were to hear the audio, I would be talking and coaching out, giving different cues right as we go. So this video kind of picks up with Elaine um, halfway through the workout. This is that walk the plank uh, component that we, we start to put together. She has a nine pound dumbbell, power block dumbbell in one hand and nothing in the other hand, really seeing how she struggles to go backwards. This is all part of, of the, the challenge of this lift is learning how to center your, your center of mass and work that forward and back. Again, you'll see this here in a few minutes. I show it again. Elaine can do snatches on her right arm but can't on her left due to an impingement. So we use the pivot point press for the left arm until we get it strong enough and healthy enough. But and then on the right arm, she's able to work into snatches. In this case, she started fatigue and eventually became a clean and press for us. Either way, we are trying to get a weight from the top of her knee to over her head in, in any way that we can do that. Going into her split squats, this is where I think Elaine has come along the most. She has done such a good job improving her split squat strength, range of motion, ability, she has uh, nine pounds in hand here, splitting pretty well on both feet and building up to a point where she's pretty damn capable, right, of, of split squatting on both legs as we go through this. I wanna show all these one more time and just give a little bit more detail on each of these. The struggle of this reverse step, we, you see the line on the floor and we're kind of using that as the balance beam. And Elaine is trying to kind of moonwalk her way along that but you see the corrections, the inconsistent, okay, am I confident, can I do this, can I transition? This is all part of the battle. I don't want her to just breeze through this and just step, 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 step without the control and the challenge of, I've gotta balance and battle and try to find the exact position, like she's doing here, before I'm able to move on. We don't just accept good enough or close enough. 
I want her to be precise and be really confident with each of these steps and work it. If she were to have a weight in her other hand, it would probably be a little easier because the weights would balance her out. They would ground her more, but it would also be an equal load for her to, to hold. She wouldn't have the challenge of constantly falling to her right side because she's got an extra pat nine pounds over there. So that challenge comes into coordinating and maintaining a good vertical posture, overcoming this load that constantly wants to pull me, trying to moonwalk and slide my feet backwards along a line where I'm on a balance beam where I've already talked about, pretend you're on a plank 30 feet over the water in between two battleships and you're gonna fall into croc infested waters. Like I make up all kinds of shit just to try to get their mind around this, right? As we go through, like it's a pretty solid, a pretty challenging component for the brain, for the body, etc. Now, when we move on to the snatches, pending the arm and the limitation, uh, Elaine broke her left shoulder a little over a year and a half ago. So yeah, no, a, a little over a year ago. It was right before Christmas. Um, well, not even a year then if we're coming up on Christmas, having rehabbed this back to the point where she can get it to vertical, even with support, okay, with the pivot point press has been a really good win for us. The right arm has always been weak, but it's been capable of getting to vertical. So she's getting a good solid lockout, a big full range of motion, nine pounds for her, huge win. Okay, this is a very successful, though clean and press instead of the snatch, still a very successful overhead action for us. And then this split stance, though she's using the stick for support, which I'm okay with, okay? A lot of people, we talk about this, it's okay to give your clients a stick. Let them use that stick for support. What's the difference between holding onto a stick and just grabbing onto the wall or the rack is that she still has to stabilize and balance herself on that stick. She can't just grab it and be completely neutralized and have all balance component taken out of this. If she doesn't stabilize that stick, she's gonna fall over. So it's, it's the betweener. It's a, a tweener between I can do it on my own or I can't do it at all, I have to grab onto the wall, right? So I'm getting a deeper full range of motion that she can't normally do on her own. I'm getting the overload of the weight in one hand. I'm getting it on the opposite side. So she's constantly being pulled to her left, right? While giving stabilization with the stick on the right, which is now lighter because she has that stabilizing load pulling her to one side. So this is a great way to train them to get deeper, to overload and, and become stronger, to work a deeper range of motion, which makes her more functional and capable of getting up and down off the floor when that time comes, but also having the support and the ability to still challenge herself, not completely stabilized by just grabbing onto the wall, right? You see how, how much goes into thinking about all of these pieces, all the things that go into this, okay? All right, so that was the first block that we had in the workout. Now, the second block, in between every exercise, let me let me go back to that so everybody can see it again here. Um, stop share. Okay, the second block, all the way on the right, we're doing bench press, we're doing four point rows, and we're doing a shoulder triangle. And in between each of those, we have 15 sit to stands via the goblet, holding that hard height that we need to do. So again, this is gonna pick up with Elaine, you know, halfway through, I think the second or third round, she got, uh, three, I think three rounds in uh, 15 minutes. So pretty respectable how much work she got done in here. And uh, it comes up with her doing her sit to stands. Now notice all the Air X pads. We have a 12 inch box that goes to 14, 16, 18 inches. We have 18 inch boxes and benches in the gym. So why am I using that setup? Well, halfway through the workout when we started, or excuse me, at the beginning of the workout when we started, she was going to 16 inches. We had one of those pads removed. And until she started to fatigue and get to a point where she was starting to round over or really starting to struggle, rocking too much for momentum, I gave her the extra two inches. So we started with a more challenging version, okay? Now into the shoulder raises, we had a front shoulder raise, we had a lateral shoulder raise. This is the hinged fly or the hinged posterior shoulder raise. Now, mind you, Elaine has scoliosis, so her back is never perfectly straight around. That's a very good hinge for her. And this shoulder activation, if you take a look, watch just from her shoulders and her neck down. Notice her shoulders are not elevating. Her traps are very neutral. Her deltoids are doing all the work on the left arm. But if you kind of look over to the right, see that right shoulder popping up just a little bit? That's getting a little bit of trap in there. Okay, that right shoulder is one she does pretty good with her overhead, but she's still getting some assistance from the delta or from the, the trap in there. Her left arm is the one that she broke. 
and that's the one that she's been rehabilitating. So that trap has learned to kind of leave it alone and let the deltoid do the work, but we're not going overhead. When she goes overhead, that's when that trap does start to compensate and do a little bit too much. Here's our four point row. You could do this in the six point position on the floor as well. I like this 4.1 because we, we're in a pretty good, you know, hinge position. It's athletic and, and she's able to push down with the floor arm or the up arm uh, while performing the row of the opposite arm pulling up. Our cues for this, the elbow needs to clear the spine. So she's getting her elbows up just high enough on the left, pretty high on the right one. There we go, that was a better one there as we start to cue her through that. Soft knees, so she's holding this good hinge position. Eventually we will take this to the floor in more of a gardener's or a gorilla row as she gets better. Back to the uh, sit to stands, right? We are doing in those asterisks in between each of these. So we catch up here, we took her a little bit lighter. She was using a nine pounder, now we're using a five pounder. A little bit lighter so she can still keep her programming together. And here we go on to bench press, a lift that she could not do in the beginning. She really struggled with this lift, struggled so much we couldn't do it even with five pound dumbbells and she's using nines as we go through the workout here. So really see some, some great gains, some great improvements as we work through. And the point of showing you all this is I wanted you to see the modifications, the adjustments that can be made for individuals that have limitations, they have injuries, they have, they have challenges that when you look at the program on paper, you might think to yourself, this client isn't gonna be able to do that action. Do we just get rid of that action then? No, we have to learn what to do and how to do it that will help that person either be able to do that action at some point or get as close to replicating that action without causing more damage or pain that eventually will help us get one step closer to being able to achieve their best potential. What I mean by that is, if I have a separated AC joint or a broken clavicle bone and I'm 90, they're not gonna fix that. They're just gonna say, do the best you can with what you got. For us to look at that client and go, they're gonna be able to press their arm over their head if I progress them correctly, that is not possible. Structurally, that thing is broken. That action is never going to be achieved, okay? 99.9 .9 times out of 100, that is not going to be achieved. So we do the best we can with what that individual has, and that might be a simple high pull Okay, every time we get there, or a leaning pivot point press, but just not to lock out, okay? That's where the modifications, where I wanted to show you how we modify literally from arm to arm, let alone from foot to foot or angle to angle based on the lift that comes up. Am I a huge fan of doing a five pound dumbbell on the weaker arm and a 10 pounder on the left on the stronger arm? Not a huge fan of that, but if that's what we need to do for a little bit to eventually maintain strength on one side and then gain it and progress on the other, then definitely. I want to find that challenging load that in increases the bone density and, the, you know, and reverses the sarcopenic effect for the body, wherever that might be. And then if there's a limited side that we have to come down to, that's fine for the time being. But my goal is to build that level up to the opposite side until both then continue to move forward. The last thing I wanna do is have the strong side get stronger and the weaker side not improve. And that gap that we already had was just made worse, okay? Rather than filling that gap or getting as close to it, and then collectively we inch that, that improvement up as we go. There is a, a strength consideration, a function consideration, a conditioning, a stability, a balance, a coordination. All of these are all things that you have to consider when we're putting together a program, when we're looking at something like this. Okay, another area of aspect that you would look with this is, do we have a lot of multi-directional, cross-sectional, rotational movements? And the answer is no, not in this workout. Why? Because the individual I'm working with and the individuals in this group, they're not ready for that. We don't have a base strength level that's capable of doing sagittal based movements really well yet, which is the plane that we're in all day long. And if they can't do that well yet, why am I going to progress them to something that's more technical, more difficult with multiple different functions, angles, parameters, angles of pull, all of this, it's only more difficult. I want to establish a very good, very solid foundational level of strength that's good at the sagittal action, and then I can start to incorporate different planes and start to target different cross-sectional movement patterns that are eventually strength-focused, 
then a little more dynamic, and then rather dynamic, explosive power-based movements like lateral tosses, vertical tosses, slams, etc. So slowly we'll start to build those in. But again, we have to look at the client in front of us, individual and or the group people we're working with and say, what's the best for them right now? What's the most effective and most efficient way to get them strong, get them bone dense, get them conditioned right now. And this program does a very good job of addressing my older adults in my ADL group. Okay, level three out of the five, right in the center there, this does the best at addressing their needs and their demands for right now. I hope you enjoyed this. If this gave you some clarity, some direction, gave you some ideas and some thoughts on what to do with some of your clients moving forward, that's awesome. If you have comments or questions, hit me up down below. I will answer as best I can. And until next time, continue to fight your good fight against sarcopenia. We will see you in the next one. If you need anything else, head over to trainingtheolderadult.com and you can find more about our programming and what we offer over there. All right, everybody, take care. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.